Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Abridge, where last time we failed to stop a conspiracy against us and gave up trying, and then we got in with the big one, our gigantic war against the Southern Empire. The main achievement was that we evened our territory out and got rid of the bits of enemy territory in ours, and they did the same to us, and now we're really just still in the middle of this conflict with it being completely undecided. Let's look at some more battles. Here I am going about my new practice of hunting down enemy parties and just defeating them in one-on-ones rather than focusing on sticking with the armies and seeing what they're doing. The plan being we can diminish the enemy's strength by just taking all their parties out of the picture. Of course we actually can't as I begin to appreciate more and more but I'll probably rant about that in this part at some point. Here I am trying to take down one guy in particular. I always try to get them to defect and they usually either say talk to my mum or it doesn't work. And then we fight them by forcing them to come and attack my position rather than me attacking them, so that I can just kill them with archers, make sure their formation's broken up, ruin their morale, looks like I killed their commander there as well. And that all just means when we attack them we kill them for no losses, so even if we're taking 100 and something troops against their 70 something, it's not like you're gonna lose 5 guys every time, you can lose 0 guys, and make sure you can just do this over and over again continuously. So we take that guy down, then there actually was some big action because nearby an enemy army is trying to take this castle and one of our armies came to defend and I can now jump in, we might actually lose that battle if I wasn't here, so this looks good, a very decisive engagement. We're going to do the usual thing for a decisive engagement, that is make sure our men don't decisively engage, so my guys will hang about at the back while I deal with matters up front and just entertain myself killing enemies. Before the battle really got started, all of the enemy's cav charged us, so here we are kind of at our deployment zone, fighting these cav with like a whole army. So that's pretty easy for us, obviously, nothing too challenging. And here, with a nice swipe, we take out their faction leader, I believe, who was hanging out at the back. Seems like she's playing the same way I play. So that went well, probably going to bode well for our morale in this battle. Then we move up and the brawl starts, there's my formation at the back there, just neatly sitting off to the side, with the archers well protected, making sure nothing happens, while the actual fight between the AIs of both sides is just an absolute mess. This was another battle where there was no formation action going on, both sides are totally loose, for some reason our formation is really wide as well, this wide loose formation is really bad actually, but luckily the enemy are also doing a terrible formation, just running at us in a loosely spaced blob and they're getting cut down. I'm sure we're losing tons of men. If we could just form a shield wall or something we'd be annihilating them. But instead we've just got this everybody dies open melee. But at least this is a great chance for me to have some nice glaive fun. The glaive is easily the best part of this game. It's so ridiculously powerful for how sort of unwieldy it looks. It's just really good, especially when the AI are super distracted. You can just hack them down with uh, barely any accuracy from you at all because you hit stuff so far away. Anyway, we hack them down for a while, the morale breaks as we run them off the field. Looks like it's a pretty decisive-ish engagement and our party didn't lose a thing. That is what we like to see. We've even got some level ups in our party. They just watch stuff and got some experience. Good for them. Maybe the archers actually got some kills. And now I'm going to throw some prisoners I've taken into jail. I mentioned last time my whole bit now was trying to imprison the entire enemy army so they weren't fighting us, which I was naively thinking was a strategy you could do. I don't really have a good way to explain when I stopped believing this. Maybe it was about now, like, I came here down to Vostrum, where one of our allies was besieging the city, and started fighting one of the, like, ten or so enemy armies that was around the place. And I started thinking, haven't I been fighting these same guys before? I know everybody looks the same in this game, so it's hard to work it out. But I was like, I swear the names, I'm starting to recognise them. Isn't this the guy I left in prison, like, a week ago in the game? And it became clear that actually, when you leave guys in prison, as someone explained to me in the comments, they just get let out by the AI because they'll ransom them off or they'll just escape. I'm not sure exactly when I truly came to appreciate this. I think I'm still at this stage in the campaign thinking I can wipe the enemy army out to make my side win. But you can't, so I think we'll probably skip over some more of these battles and I just won't mention them like I was not mentioning the battles with looters earlier because you can just win them with no losses if you put the time in and it's just annoying that in retrospect this actually was a waste of time, I think, anyway, I'm still not entirely sure. It does take them out of the war for a few days at least. I guess the question is, does it take them out for longer than it takes like your side to form an army and walk over to the enemy's territory? Because if they're back to full strength by the time you can counterattack, 
that is to make any use of your victory, then your victory was a waste of time. You might as well have just gone ahead with the full attack right away. If you know what I mean. I've stumbled here into a slightly more interesting battle, a less trivial one, where I'm fighting a whole load of enemies at once. In this fight though, we had this great position with our archer standing above the infantry, and this enemy swarm is packed with recruits and archers, things that are going to be vulnerable to arrow fire, so we're just pouring it on them as they run at us, picking up the kills as you can see on the thing at the right shooting by, grabbing some kills myself as well. Then of course their infantry are going to make it up and some of them do have shields so we're going to have to fight them in a more reasonable sort of way but by this point we've already killed like a third of their force and tons of them are running away as well. More skirmishing away really. Those guys are going away and I'm killing some of them. My cav are now going to sweep in from behind. Some of them were distracted though because some enemy like cav like two or three guys were over there in the distance so a lot of them didn't attack where I wanted them to. Need more control over that still. Looks like I'm going to go out and do that instead. And the main fight, well, that's already over at this point. We can just overwhelm them with our better infantry. Now I'm going to go here and get overwhelmed by enemy archer fire, but at least if they're shooting at me, they're not shooting at our troops. And I'm technically immortal, so it doesn't matter if I die. We're saving lives. This is true, micro. Seems like I went to hunt down the enemy commander somewhere who was, I guess, the last unrouted unit on the field, so that ended the battle for us. So yes, this time we did actually lose some troops in the engagement, 12 in total. But we did get a good ratio, we took down like 200 enemies and grabbed a couple of extra prisoners. After that I went and helped out with the siege you might have spotted going on right next to where I was standing. And it's the usual tactic, absorb some arrows and look for shadowy movements in the windows to see where some of the enemies defending archers are. And that just goes as normal, didn't even go into the castle for that one. You can see there's loads of stuff outside the castle. The enemy sent loads of armies, or loads of parties I should say, to come here, but they didn't form an army, so they weren't all together, meaning they were all collectively too scared to engage because they all individually were outnumbered. But if they just clustered together, they might have been able to do something there. Anyway, they run off in the end, and that's the end of that. Then I went back to the middle of the lines to find some more small parties like these ones and take them down. In this one, I got some real deja vu because this guy I'm shooting off a horse with my bow is actually the same guy I shot off a horse with my bow at the start of this part and it must have been around this time in the campaign I started to really realize these guys aren't dying, they're just coming back with half of their troops already alive. It must have been at least an in-game week since I saw him, but it's not long enough, that's basically what I was thinking. Here's another battle shortly after, where I was going absolutely loo-boo on these camels. The camels charged us at the start of the fight and I went out to duel with them and just owned them all up real easy. This is another upside to the glaive, you just swing wildly in a cavalryman's direction and you almost certainly hit them or the horse, so easy wins there. Here I think I might have done something useful for our side. I spotted that army phasing in and out of existence. It's going for this castle over here. So I thought I will throw myself into this castle, even though the garrison isn't that big. I'm going to actually try and defend it, because I do have some elite troops here. We end up facing double our numbers outside, and the siege goes on for a long time. Ultimately there was no battle, because the enemy army just walks off as you'll see. And what I wonder is, did the siege last longer because I was here, causing them to not attack before whatever it is that called them away, called them away? So they go off, go off back to their own territory and we didn't see them again, and I'm going to claim that I have saved this castle for our side. Next I went back to Vostrum because this is happening again, the thing we saw earlier. Obviously we just lose all these territories we take instantly and then have to retake them. And here it's the same thing with the enemy just swarming about the area. I think I did go in and fight a couple of them. Here was one that had a little bit of a fight. The enemy didn't rout before they attacked me. Well, some of them didn't rout. Actually, a load of them are running about in the background. But yeah, sometimes we have to actually get down and dirty and kill at least five guys to beat these parties. But that's doable as well. Another fight after that happened in pretty much the exact same location, in fact I think it is the same location but later the same day. And here I am, <laughs> annihilating that enemy cav and then taking out the enemy's officer at the back as well. I hope this is very intimidating, I feel like there must be some kind of morale debuff the enemy gets when their commander gets killed. I'm sure the fashion in which you kill him doesn't matter, so the fact we're doing it in a particularly humiliating way for the enemy probably doesn't make a difference. Anyway, eventually 
The enemy brought an army over to this siege. I thought we were about to have a nice decisive battle, but actually we took the castle one second before the battle started, and then the enemy army gave up. It also <laughs> disbanded by the looks of things. Our army just goes and sits in the town and their units run off. So we missed a potential decisive fight there. Next, I formed an army myself with a few other guys. I went to patrol the middle of the map again, back outside good old Gauss Castle, which we've just been exchanging with them throughout the war. And this time, I prevented an exchange by stepping in and attacking this enemy army before it finished its siege. As for what happened in the battle, well, I had really got into this idea of just assassinating enemy officers. I really enjoy doing this. I remember I used to do this a lot in Warband as well. Just kind of ride up behind the enemy army, be a distraction, and their cav and officers tend to try and fight you. So we saw there, I just cut down one officer. Here's another trying to get back to his men, but he does not make it. The glaive allows you to just sort of poke wildly in front of you and take them down as they flee. All good stuff. Then a fight does happen, but it's another sort of chaotic in the middle of the night. Can't really tell what's going on fight. Well, we have tons of allied units that I'm not controlling who are just marauding all over the place. And they're probably doing a good job. My party was in here as well. Because I'm in an army, I can't have my personal party not participate in the fight. You can see in the stats, my party only lost two members in the brawl, but killed 150. Now that's a pretty good exchange. It seems my personal troops are doing very well. Next, I came to help out with this siege at Fukion. This is a city in between the Vrostrum place and the Gauss place we've seen in this part. And I was doing the usual here, just sort of helping, killing enemies and looking for heads over the wall, standing in my favorite spot for this map. But this was the fight where my morale broke and the game finally beat me. I was here getting hit by arrows, killing some enemies, and I just thought, you know what? I don't care. We're going. I just can't be bothered to shoot enemies off the wall anymore. Because by this point, I've done it a billion times, and it is exactly the same every time. So I was like, I'll just go. I'm just going to sit outside the town and let the auto resolve win, because we've got like a thousand guys against 200. We'll probably win. However, 1,200 enemies showed up before the siege was over, so we actually didn't take the place in the end. I should have kept playing, then we would have already had it by the time this army arrived. Bad news. Again, a game defeats me by forcing me to get lazy by not enjoying the gameplay, and then it cuts me down to size. Now, I wanted to do something about this enemy army. It's massive, and I thought, let's try and be proactive and get a decisive battle going. We can see from the tooltips that they're going to besiege that city at the top of the screen. So I decided to call an army to me and go to the city to defend it. And here I'm moving very carefully so that I can still see the enemy army because I was very aware of the fact they might just go somewhere else. This is going to be a good example of the thing I ranted about last time, actually, where you don't necessarily know what the enemy's main armies are doing at any given time, even if your side of the war does know what they're doing. Anyway, for now, I don't get many troops to the city before the enemy arrive, but I go in anyway, thinking maybe we can hold them. However, they've bamboozled me. They just walk past the city once I'm in there, and I was like, hey, where are you going? So I decided to chase them, and by catching up to them, we can get the tooltip back and see that they are now heading for the next city to the north up there. So we're behind them, but with a bit of maneuver power, we can still defend that city. Our army is going to be a bit faster on the march. So over the next couple of game days, we get ahead of them and get into the city. Now I'm getting into the city just ahead of them. I thought it would be safe for me to lose sight of them and not confirm they were actually going to lay siege to it. But after another day of waiting, they don't show up. Imagine inviting the enemy to a siege and nobody comes. So that was a shame. Then I went out to take a look and just couldn't see them anymore. I thought, aha, they've probably been super cheeky. And now that that city was defended, they went back to their original target to attack it with its smaller garrison. But no, they're not there either. So here's the problem, really. Where are they? I bet someone in our faction knows where they are. The only way to possibly find out is to either see them myself or keep checking this thing here, where sometimes it will say traveling to X to defend. And that means the AI has detected the enemy are about to attack that place or are already there, basically. So I walked around. I didn't really let this issue go. I kept checking the thing over and over again, thinking they must be somewhere, that group of a thousand troops. They're going to cause some trouble. But there was no report, there were no reports of them showing up, until this eventually is noticed by me. They're actually at this city further into our territory, and we can see that they're attacking on that tooltip. 
we just needed a way for that tooltip to flash up massive on the screen saying, by the way, there are a thousand enemy troops here on the map. You might want to do something about it. I remember, well, it might have been a mod, but in Mountain Blade Warband of my memory, there would be like messages that would go past saying something like a massive enemy force has been spotted near Y every time they would come into line of sight of one of your territories or one of your fiefs. And by your, I mean your side. It does pop up if one of your own cities gets attacked, just not your side. So that would have been really good, basically, and would have made my wandering around, which I've been cutting out for the most part, much less wandering. It would have been going places to actually do stuff. So, at least now we have something to do, we've just lost one of our actual Kuzate cultured cities to that attack, and I'm going to go over there and check it out, maybe retake it, we'll see what's going on. On the way ran into 100 enemy troops with my army, we could easily beat them, but after they refused to defect, I just kind of let them go. My real life morale at this stage was very low, I just couldn't face actually playing another fight, so I was like, oh, I'll just let you walk off because you're probably not going to do anything. And if I do kill you, you just come back. It's at that stage in the logic where I was like, I don't think there's any point in fighting these parties. Let's just only go for very strategic and big engagements at this stage. That was my thinking anyway. The city itself should be retakeable, but it's swarming with the remnants of that thousand man army all over the place. I can sit on this bridge, which is fun because now they can't cross it because they're all too individually fearful of engaging our army. Handy, we can keep them from going back to their territory, and even strategically like keep them from going and joining another army because they're stuck here, unable to walk past me. Possibly an interesting option there. But broadly speaking, I was kind of burnt out. We haven't made any progress in the war in this part. We've made a bit of back progress, in fact. Basically, the last 10 minutes of this video were two hours of back and forth warfare over the front line in which ultimately nothing happened and now we've lost one of our core cities. Here's a look at the strength on both sides. We started with I think 14,000 and they had 8,000 strength so we we're actually losing the war technically according to these stats and I was just not impressed. I felt like I couldn't do anything about it, and this was where I was going to end the campaign. I was just going to give up and be like, well, if we do win, this will take forever. It's not going anywhere anytime fast, and I've got stuff to do. But then a couple of things came across my mind. The first was from reading some comments. Some people were saying something that implies you could kill enemy officers. They were saying something like, oh, I just kill them to make sure they don't come back. And I was like, hey, that's what I want to do. So I came back to the game, just auto resolve the nearest enemy party to get a captive, and then went to try and click on them in here, and indeed there is a button that just allows you to kill them. I'd never discovered this so far, and I was like, okay, that's exactly what I need. Let's just get rid of these 10 officers that are around this city, and then we'll probably win the war. It does say though there's some kind of reputation penalty, it doesn't specify what it is. In old Mountain Blade, you'd had like an honor system or something, so I thought maybe I'll become dishonorable. But it's actually referring to like your uh, relationships with the other clans. At first, looks like I decided not to execute him, then jump back in and instantly did. I guess I thought, well, I might as well at this point if the other option is just quitting the campaign. So we kill that guy. The problem is the penalty you get for executing him is quite large. You lose relations with like everyone in the known universe, including your own factions, clans as well. So I thought if I do kill everyone here, suddenly I'll become like the arch enemy of the world and maybe something bad will happen because of that instead. So with that in mind, I thought, oh, I probably won't execute them all then. However, then I came back to the game again a different time after I remembered, wait a minute, everyone says you just have to mod the game. And as I mentioned in the last part, I probably should have done that from the beginning and now it's time to actually get into this. I'm going to try and finish the campaign, but I am going to cheat using mods. So we're going to do things like increase the amount of stuff you get from fighting so it's less of a waste of time like right here. And I think among all of these other Bannerlord tweaks you get in the big Bannerlord tweaks mod, I'm increasing things like how many troops I can have in my party, how many businesses I can have experience gain. Not only experience gain from battles, but experience gained in the background. You can get a tiny bit of experience on your troops from a leadership perk. 
but it's an irrelevant amount. So with this mod, now you can train troops outside of combat, which is what this game desperately needs to avoid all of the horrors that come with having to train your own troops up. So that's good. Looks like we can also make the hideout battles better by letting you just bring the whole party to do it. That's good. And you can see the party size bonuses there. They're not just straight up cheats per se, they're cheats based on your stats, so it just makes your stats do more things. And here is the big one, this minimum days of imprisonment thing you can add in. So by default it sets it to be 10, that is the mod sets it. I think by default it's 0, and this mod adds in the concept of not letting them out of prison for a certain amount of time. So this is what's going to replace the execution really, I'm going to set that to be about a month. So if we take down an enemy party, they won't come back for a month, meaning we can now technically win the war. A month's a reasonable amount of time in the game, really. So you can take out an enemy army and have enough time to then go and take the place they came from before that army comes back. That's the idea anyway. So hopefully the player's involvement in the war will matter a lot more with this enabled and the game almost definitely needs that to be actually part of the default game. There's also a whole bunch of other things that come with this mod. I didn't look through them in great detail. Basically, some of them were on by default, so I thought whoever made this probably thinks these things are a good idea. So I pretty much left all the stuff that comes on by default on and didn't play much with anything else. And now we're back to the game with new hope that I can actually do stuff. Thanks to me having really high stewardship, I now have like 60 extra party capacity, so we can have nearly 200 people in our personal party. That's more like it, we can have some more influence with that, I mean influence in terms of not the game currency that is, but also we do get more influence for fighting battles. So I can be more liberal about forming armies, it's less of a big deal to try and do that as well, so that's great. Plus of course we have this prisoner thing, so now the 10 or so enemy armies walking around enemy parties are actually a valid target. We can take these guys out of the game for a while, if not permanently, and that while might be long enough that our side benefits from doing this. So I've got newly renewed vigor to go bring these guys down. With this guy, I almost got him to defect. This is the first guy of all the ones I tried who actually got to this screen. Unfortunately, he wants more money than I have. I've got tons of money, but it's not enough. Even these horses, and give him like a hundred horses and nearly a million coins, he doesn't want to defect. So we're going to have to kill him. Just going to use the usual strategy to try and make them aggro onto me. I was on the other side of a river in this battle, so I really wanted them to cross it since my position was so good. But there is one other thing these tweaks do, and that is they make the glaive even more outrageous. One thing it does is make two-handed weapons pass through their first target, which basically means if we swing the glaive into a group, it will kill potentially two enemies, or at least it will hit two enemies. Like right here, we get a hit that kills one and does a bunch of damage to a second one. So the already very good glaive is now potentially twice as good in this mod, meaning the mod is already the best thing to come out of this game. And yes, we bag more renown and influence than usual for killing them, plus we gain more experience than usual on our troops, so it's less of a big deal to lose men because it takes less time to turn a recruit into a usable soldier. So yes, now I just need to go around and do this to a bunch of parties and start getting all these Imperial officers in the slammer so that maybe the stalemate that I've mostly cut out and probably doesn't come across in these videos can be over and perhaps more importantly, so I can kill multiple people at the same time with the glaive, which is just really good. I can't really recommend the game because it is really broken, unfinished and just badly balanced, but whoever made this mod has fixed it, that's for sure. <laughs> this is a unique and very fun gameplay experience. Anyway, so why don't you join me next time for what will not be the end of this series as it turns out. We're going to plow on now and try to actually get somewhere. I have hope once again.